Welcome back, everybody. Uh, today, I want to talk about counterpoint, which is a subject that's uh, near and dear to my heart, kind of always on my mind. Um, it can be a topic that, you know, is a little bit confusing at first, or maybe it feels daunting and uh, like there's not a good place to start because um, it seems so vast. And, you know, dealing with the music of Bach, you know, it's, it feels very like academic and uh, Intimidating, at least it did to me at first. Um, and today I'd just like to introduce you all to the idea of counterpoint, what it means to me and how I think about it. Um, and maybe set you up with a little bit of a primer on um, how this is uh, all studied and some of the terminology. Um, counterpoint, very broadly to me, just means uh, any two musical elements juxtaposed, two or more. Um, there can be counterpoint as far as texture or timbre, um, intention, mood, right? We're always juxtaposing things in music. And uh, counterpoint in a tonal context is just the study of how um, notes function against each other and how they compare and contrast. Um, so basically, I encourage you to think of counterpoint as being a very broad thing. Um, the drum set has a lot of counterpoint in it. It has bright metal and dark skins, right? Like a tom versus a hi-hat. Those are different timbres juxtaposed together. Um, a double bass playing half notes and then a, a guitar playing quarter notes on top of that, that's counterpoint. Um, but zooming into the guitar uh, and the world of pitches, there's basically four different kinds of contrapuntal motion, which is ways that two notes, two or more notes, but we'll stick with two, um, the way that two notes move against each other. The most simple one to start with, I think, is parallel motion, uh, which is when uh, two notes are moving at the same rate in the same direction. And when I mean rate, I mean by like distance and interval. So um, if I have a G major, or uh, yeah, G and B together, um, and I move it through the scale, always at the same rate. So whenever this low note moves up by a third, this one, the upper note also moves by a third, right? And that gets this kind of pleasing, um, kind of sweet sound. You can do it with any interval. I like parallel uh, sevenths through a scale. It's kind of gorgeous sound. You could do that all day. Um, try it with a bunch of different intervals, parallel fifths. So same direction, same rate. That's really important, same rate. Um, the next one I'd like to explore is oblique motion. Um, so this means that one note is staying uh, fixed, so not moving, and another note is moving on top of it. Or the flip, there's a note that's static on top and then notes moving underneath it. So, um, that kind of walk up. I have this low and then a high note. So that's kind of a classic sounding thing right there. Or um, that happens too, right? It's, uh, same note on top. That's oblique motion. Uh, another famous example would be like ACDC's Thunderstruck, which I, I'm not going to play uh, very accurately right now, but uh, like that kind of thing. You know, it's it's that that kind of idea uh, in the music of Bach is meant to imitate like a monophonic instrument, like the the old like musettes 
where they could only play one note at a time, but even on one uh, a monophonic instrument, you can hawk it using, you know, you give the sense of, a, of two notes or two uh, instruments playing with each other. Um, so that's one of the hallmarks of oblique motion as it's used in older music is like to ev evoke the sound of that instrument. Um, and yeah, that's, that's a super useful one and kind of an easy one to grasp, you know, just keep one note the same and move it around on top. Uh, the next one um, that I think is kind of a catch-all, um, it's, it's less specific than the ones we've mentioned so far, is similar motion, which means that we're moving, two notes are moving in a similar direction, but not by the same rate. So something like this. Um, so this is moving by, well, I can't really remember what I just said, just kind of threw that out there. Um, let me make it more accurate. Uh, maybe if I'm going. So that's moving by scale. And I'm moving by fifth in the bass. Maybe going the other way. Um, so this went down, and this went down, but in, you know, in a very different trajectory. So there's still uh, a similarity to that. Sorry, I played it wrong. So see. That has a satisfying quality to it because they're going the same direction, but not at the same rate. That's similar motion. Two notes, similar direction, same direction, but not by the same rate, as opposed to parallel motion, which is same direction, same rate. Finally, we get to talk about contrary motion, which is kind of the most uh, sophisticated sounding of all of them. Uh, that's when one note is going down and the other is going up. They're going in different in opposing directions so they're kind of coming into each other uh, like something like this so here i started with a unison one note is going up the other is going down right so they can come into each other or go away from each other one up one down um, Classic example, stairway. This is going up, this is going down. And these don't have to be at the same rate. These can be just, uh, you know, they can go their own directions usually. So, um, you know, the... My funny valentine, sweet comic valentine. That's a common contrary motion cliche. Um, another famous example would be like the Bach bourre. That's got a lot of contrary motion in it. The very opening thing. This is going down, that's going up. That's going up, this is going down. So in a lot of this um, like rich contrapuntal music, you'll find all of these kinds of motion at different points. And basically all notes moving together will kind of be boiled down to this. So I encourage you, um, when, when you're practicing your scales, for instance, pick one of these motions uh, and try and stick to it like this. little bit of oblique motion there with G major. Here's some contrary motion. I'm sorry. You know, you'll get into a little bit of trouble, but um, Get 
synth. Right, I'm going opposite directions there. Uh, similar motion. Um, what's another one that we did? Uh, parallel motion. There you have to pick an interval, so maybe let's do fourths. That's parallel motion in fourths around the key of G major. Finally, I'd like to introduce you all to this book, um, The Study of Counterpoint. Uh, this is like a new edition of um, the classic book by uh, Johann Josef Fuchs uh, called Gratis Ad Parnassum, um, which means steps to heaven, steps to Parnassus. And um, this is written in the form of a dialogue between a student and a teacher. A uh, very eager student and sort of like a wise teacher. And um, the student is learning about counterpoint or wishes to learn about counterpoint. And the teacher is sort of helping the student along. Um, it's a really, really well written book, very cleverly written, and it is just chock full of information on the basics of counterpoint. Um, all the greats have studied this Beethoven, Haydn, I believe, also. It was written in 1725. Um, and serves as a really neat handbook for anyone wanting to study this stuff. So um, I hope you got something out of the lecture today. Um, please let me know if you did. Please subscribe. It really helps me out. Um, I want to grow this channel so I can get this kind of info out to more people. Um, hopefully I'll have some more um, on the topic um, because this is just like a fascinating topic to me. And I think it's kind of what we're all after really, really beautiful lines and a sophisticated sense of harmony. So um, thanks for being with me today. Take care. Be well.